Of course there's a bathroom joke. Where was this movie made after all? Welcome to the Silver Spleen. My name is Shaquille O'Neal, and this is my review of Tiny Times 4, the fourth and last installment of this cinematic assault on decency, intelligence, and filmmaking. Tiny Times 4 is the fourth, and thankfully last, installment of Tiny Times, a series of vapid, worthless movies about four women with absolutely no grounding in reality. The entire franchise is a fevered two-how dream of a short gay man from a third-tier city, an abject surreal fantasy of what life must be like in the fast lane of the big city. It's the business world as seen through the mind's eye of a 15-year-old girl who doesn't live in a city. Everything is glamorous and the women are all fashion models, except the fat one whom any first-year psych student could see is the projected alter ego of the writer. And all the men are unbelievably handsome, even though they're so carved up with plastic surgery that they look like Shanzai Ken dolls. I haven't seen painted eyebrows like that since Joan Rivers died. They say the most simple, trite dialogue as if it's profound nuggets of wisdom. Fucking steak nuggets! Hey, I'm just, you know, pandering to the movie's audience. Kinda like that shot of the escalator where two characters are going in opposite directions. As if no one's ever done that before. Well, no one's ever done it this badly. Have you ever seen women running through the rain? Of course you have! We all have! But that makes no difference to Napoleon Troglodyte. The story is so shoddily written that the only way you can tell that it's a different day is that the outfits change. But then again, sometimes they change outfits several times a day. One of these boneheads wore two outfits in the same scene. Because, you know, that's what rich, beautiful people do. Or that's what people from third-tier cities think it's like. You decide. Tiny Times 4 opens poorly and just keeps getting worse. What should normally be establishing shots to let you know who's in the scene and where it is become the focus of entire scenes. Long, pandering glamour shots of various characters who are so inherently unlikable you can't even really focus on the movie because only Adolf Eichmann with a transplanted lizard's heart could care at all about people this worthless and vapid. Characters spend the vast preponderance of their time oozing a kind of smirking condescension, not to each other, but to anyone dumb enough to have paid money to watch this garbage. Except the fat one, who just looks grateful to be working, even if she's the one tasked with making the bathroom joke. Because hot girls don't shit, I guess. There's an unavoidable gay subtext in these movies, but it's sadly not subversive. It's just sad. All the eye candy in this franchise is for gay men, and I'm not mad at them. It's just that the stories in all these movies is ostensibly sensibly about four straight women who are beautiful and glamorous. And yet, we never see them underdressed. No bikinis, no lingerie. It's always like dudes with no shirts and slow motion and a strange indoor breeze. Some people might say, well, that's feminism, that's women not being objectified. But that's not true for two reasons. One, I doubt feminists would approve of female characters this shallow, dumb, and male fixated. And two, the gay director probably doesn't care what these women look like unless they're wearing expensive clothes. He's too busy just stuffing these movies full of languid shots of shirtless young men. And I'm really not mad at him. All right, maybe a little. I'm not a fan of lingerie, per se. But if I have to sit through eight hours of just tedious, excruciating bullshit, I'd take what I could get. I don't object to having gay characters or gay directors. That's not my point at all. It's just that this is a China movie, and in China movies, you're not allowed to be gay or have gay characters. You are allowed to have gay actors, though. And almost all the guys in these movies are plainly gay, which is why it's hard to swallow them being engaged to or otherwise interested in women. Seriously, it's, it's like watching Harvey Firestein try to play straight. But you know what? I will say this for Tiny Times 4. In no other movie 
Could you ever get to see an obviously gay man who's engaged to a woman kill Colonel Sanders? And I'm really not objecting to gay people being in movies, I swear I'm not. My inappropriate fixation on tomboys should be proof of that. I just find it impossible to watch actors who can't even pretend to like the female characters that they're supposedly in love with. I don't know, maybe all that plastic surgery has frozen their faces. More likely, they just can't act. You know what? I'll never say a bad word about Patrick Kong again. I ended up watching Tiny Times 4 because I knew I would hate it, and I knew that you guys would probably enjoy me hating it. And let me just say again, I really didn't object to the gay men being in the movie. Frankly, the fact that these profoundly gay men were in this movie trying to pretend that they liked these women because they're bad actors, not because they're gay. That entertained me, so at least I got that out of it, so I'm sincerely grateful that they were there. But everything else about this movie is just so offensive and wrong and badly done, and just, it's just garbage! And that's why I watched it, because you'd get to watch me responding to what I watched, okay? Don't watch this movie. Just don't. I ended up having to go, like, I needed a passport to watch this movie. So what does that tell you? If it ever gets released on DVD, I'll update the description, but don't buy it. If you enjoyed my review, please let me know. If you didn't, please let me know. If you like the channel, please subscribe. Thank you for watching.